Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work D. Well, Composer X is Franz Waxman. Now, a lot of you probably have never heard of Franz Waxman. I mean, I've talked about him on this channel a bit. He was one of the great composers of Hollywood's golden age. He wrote mostly film scores. He was another one of those European emigre composers. He was Jewish. He had to get out of Germany. Wonderfully well-trained. He was very active in Berlin's vibrant musical life in the 1930s. He's most famous for having written the score to The Bride of Frankenstein, which is one of the great horror movie scores ever. And it was, it was music that really made the film, because let's face it, the film was... And, and the creation of the female monster is one of his most marvelous segments. It's a big, long piece. I mean, he was, he was very well trained in style. He was sort of of the court vile school. Uh, he, the resemblance of his music to that of Shostakovich has often been noted. And I, I just think he was spectacular. He really was. And now that we're coming to appreciate the, the achievement of the great Hollywood film composers as just great composers and not like, oh, well, it's movie music or it's second rate or it's good for movie music. We begin to realize how much, how much craft and inspiration these people put in to writing music that, that often is not, wasn't even going to be heard. It's, it's under dialogue. It got cut and chopped and sliced and rearranged, but they wrote marvelous, marvelous music. And so Work D, in my humble opinion, is his score, the complete score, to Sunset Boulevard. What a, first of all, the film is just, you know, it's Billy Wilder's, one of his great masterpieces as a director. It's extraordinary. It's a black comedy. Uh, it's held up fabulously over the years and the and the score fits it like a like a hand in a glove it is absolutely perfect you know billy wilder of course was sort of the same background as franz waxman i mean they they got on famously in fact you know the the, the film as you know gloria swanson as as norma desmond you know the psychotic crazy over the hill silent movie actress who never made it into the talkies who's living in the past and and she has a screenplay and the screenplay is salome or salome as she calls it salome and of course she has this affair with this young guy who's a who's a writer and who's banging the thing into shape and banging her while he's banging the thing into shape which is rather creepy and and it has just the best best line in all of movies. Now, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it's just this fantastic, you know, she's sitting there with the cigarette and like the cigarette holder and, you know, with her claw-like hand. And he says, I know you, you're Norma Desmond. You used to be big. And she looks at him and she says, I am big. It's the pictures that got small with her voice dripping with contempt. That's just one of those, you know, aha moments in, in film. It's so marvelously done. And you know, because Gloria Swanson was, was that person in a sense. I mean, she wasn't insane, but she was one of the greats of silent films. And she, you know, it was her story and all of the people who were involved in it about the, the shallowness and, 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 and horribleness of Hollywood. I mean, oh, it was just so great. So anyway, the movie's amazing and the score fits it so well. And Billy Wilder wanted Franz Waxman to use Salome. I mean, he wanted Salome. He didn't want Franz Waxman. He wanted Richard Strauss's Salome for the final scene when she's insane and she's coming down the stairs, you know, okay, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. You know, she does that thing. It's incredible. Well, um, Waxman said to Wilder, I can do this. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you what you want, but let's keep it consistent with the, the, the light motifs running through the film. I mean, also just turned it into Richard Strauss because, of course, Waxman had his own style, which wasn't really Straussian. And, and oh my goodness, he did a bang-up job. And one of the wonderful things about the score to Sunset Boulevard is that if you know the final scene of Salome, you know, do-do-do, do, I have a nine in you know, it's, it, he's done such a wonderful job 
paraphrasing it. You know, you've got the creepy little trills. You've got those little motives heard from afar, little fanfares and bits of pieces of things from earlier in the film. And then there's the moment when she's coming down the stairway. I mean, she doesn't have the head of John the Baptist, of course, but I mean, you can imagine it practically because her tune is a tango. It's ya da 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 great tune just a great tune and and he does this this dissonant you know bump and grind as she comes down the stairs it's such a fabulous modern take on what Richard Strauss did so if you know Salome and you listen to Sunset Boulevard it has so much resonance so much additional stuff to like you know sink your teeth into or your eardrums. It's got a lot of other good tunes. Do 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 you know it's her boyfriend and it's just it's just a score full of full of fantastic ideas. Really wonderful music ideas and he develops them and it's been recorded marvelously by you know Veres Saraband and you know those people at new modern recording with the Scottish National Orchestra. Oh God it sounds fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's both modern and and classical and and it's just got everything in it what a glorious piece and of course i love doing these film music things because even though the evil god cankrozan says he's going to destroy all of classical music but for one work per composer he doesn't say anything about the movies so i, I mean we might lose original soundtracks but we'll have the films with the soundtracks behind them like rebecca and some of the other things that waxman did um, I, I'm not as worried that we're going to lose Waxman as I am other composers, but I would still insist to the evil god Cancrasans that you cannot destroy the, the entire body of work of these people because, because we need to hear it away from the films. We need to appreciate their genius and creativity in, in, in creating these worlds. And they had to be so eclectic. They had to do different styles of music, but still, I mean, the great composers, Korngold, Waxman, you know, Nicholas Rosha, I mean, they always sounded like themselves, even while they were evoking every possible era, idiom, style, aesthetic. That's what, that's what genius is. And, you know, if, if we can't hear that, then, you know, what are we doing talking about classical music at all? Because it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a symphony or a something or a this or that, or it's German or Italian or French. What matters is just how great the music is, how distinctive the composer is, how, how brilliantly they realize the assignment and write music that, that stays with us, that's memorable and speaks to us. However it does it, it doesn't matter. It's just, there's just great music and not great music. And Waxman was a great composer and he wrote great music and Sunset Boulevard is my pick. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.